The 2024 season will be the 100th for the New York Giants, and we are celebrating them many times this year, uh, going back in their history of this first 100 years. And tonight, we celebrate one of their early stars, Benny Friedman. His story's coming up in just a moment. This is the Pigskin Daily History Dispatch, a podcast that covers the anniversaries of American football events throughout history. Your host, Darren Hayes, is podcasting from America's North Shore to bring you the memories of the gridiron one day at a time. Hello, my football friends. This is Darren Hayes of PigskinDispatch.com. Welcome once again to the Pig Pen, your portal to positive football history. And this NYG 100 celebration has got to be one of the great things that are going on this year. And we're going to be talking about some of their stars and some of the great games and big moments in Giants history. And none is bigger than the early star of Benny Friedman. And we're telling his story on his birthday, which was March 18th, 1905. And he wasn't your typical football player. It was in an era dominated by the ground and pound offenses. Friedman emerged as a passing prodigy, forever changing the game's landscape. And we are going to explore his remarkable career in this episode, highlighting his impact on the sport and his legacy as a true gridiron innovator. Now, the gridiron experience for the young Benjamin started negatively when his high school coach in Cleveland, Ohio, where he was born, looked at the five foot six, 150 pound youngster and informed him that he would never be able to play football due to his small stature. Now, Friedman soon transferred to a neighboring school to pursue his sports dreams, and he thrived playing football, ba- baseball, and basketball. And Betty helped his new alma mater even win the 1922 Cleveland City Gridiron Championship. His classic feats did not go unnoticed as Friedman was enrolled at the University of Michigan by the following fall, now playing on the freshman team. When the eligible to play varsity, he was a reserve at first and witnessed the thumping the Wolverines took at the hands of the Red Grange-led Illinois 11. Now, Michigan coach George Little at the time shook the starting lineup up a bit after this defeat and inserted Benny as the starting right halfback. Now, Friedman's brilliance shone brightly at the University of Michigan. Playing quarterback and halfback, he defied the run-heavy strategies of the time. Unlike most teams, his exceptional throwing ability and innovative play calling, uh, calling plays at the line of scrimmage, beat him in a nightmare for opposing defenses. By the time the opening game of the 1925 season, Friedman's junior year, the rising star accounted for all three of Michigan's touchdowns, two long t- pass plays, and a 26-yard run to the goal line in a 21 to nothing throttling of rival Wisconsin. With Benny leading the way, the Wolverines captured at least a share of the Big Ten Conference title in consecutive seasons, and he earned All-American honors twice and was a significant factor in leading Michigan to that dominant period. But just before the 1927 football season, Friedman, who was now out of school, announced that he would be signing a contract to play with the Cleveland Bulldogs of the NFL. The rookie started all 13 games for the Bulldogs, tossing a 50-yard touchdown pass in the opener, and he led his hometown Cleveland 11 to a respectable 8-4-1 record in a franchise the next year relocated and rebranded as the Detroit Wolverines that following season. Again, Friedman led the league in passing with 10 touchdowns for his second year, and he used his legs and led the NFL in rushing touchdowns to become the only player in league history to be at the top of both categories in the same year. The Wolverines finished the year in third place at 7-2-1. Now, the 1927 world champion New York Giants swept the entire league except for one year. And that was Friedman and the lead Bulldogs. In an interesting spin, the Giants never had beaten Benny Friedman. They were 0-2-2 against him and 0-1-1 against both the Cleveland Bulldogs and the Detroit Wolverines in their lifetime. Now, despite the success of the past two seasons with Benny, the Detroit franchise would have a little bit more stable financial venture. They were still a little bit, uh, you know, shortfalls on money. Now the team played one season of Detroit Wolverines and in 1929 they were absorbed by the New York football Giants. Giants owner Tim Mara had seen enough and figured if he couldn't beat Friedman he bought him and the rest of the Wolverines team. Mara's foresight in Friedman being an elite player who could lead the Giants to bigger and better things was spot on. Now Friedman was the main reason that the New York businessman bought the Wolverines franchise. 
Laura also figured that Benny would be a great draw at the gate, and Friedman quickly became the highest paid NFL player when he inked his new contract with the Giants for an unprecedented $10,000 per season. Big money at that time. To put Benny's effectiveness and innovative style of play into perspective, it was the fourth contest of the 1929 campaign, Friedman's third NFL season, that the signal caller became the NFL's all-time career leader in touchdown passes. The milestone was significant as it would not be broken until 1943 by Sammy Baugh. Now the former Michigan star had transformed the forward pass from a third down desperation tactic into an offensive attack method that would be deployed on any down. And we must remember that the footballs of that era were more considerable girth than the modern pigskin. Really hard to pass. So Friedman reportedly trained and stretched the fingers of his throwing hand to be strong enough to depress the leather with a wide grip. His secrets included carrying a rubber ball in his coat pocket that he continually worked over, and he would also practice manipulating his thumb and forefinger into a painfully stretching straight line on a tabletop for as long as he could hold it. Now, Benny played with the Giants through the 1930 season and then announced he would retire to focus on coaching uh, for a job that he accepted with Yale. Now, his work schedule worked out so that he could sign with the Giants for the 1931 season. He played nine games with the club. In 1932, Friedman suited up for the Brooklyn Dodgers gridiron franchise to be their player coach for three more seasons before retiring from play in the NFL. Friedman's professional career from 1927 to 1934 further solidified his reputation as a passing pioneer. He consistently led the league in passing touchdowns, shattering records and proving the effectiveness of the aerial attack. His success forced teams to adapt their defensive strategies, making the turning point for the modern quarterback as his play changed the dynamics and expectations of the position. The future Hall of Famer would continue coaching with the City College of New York then as an assistant with the U.S. Navy team during the Second World War. And finally, he became the athletic director of Brandeis University in Massachusetts. Beyond his passing prowess, Friedman was a complete player. He was a skilled kicker, an accurate passer, and an accomplished runner. His versatility made him a true offensive weapon, capable of attacking defenses in multiple ways. His durability was also impressive as he played through a time when a player safety wasn't a primary concern. However, Friedman's career was challenging. He faced prejudice as a son of a Jewish immigrant and a rarity in professional football at the time. Additionally, injuries began to hamper his performance later in his career. And despite these obstacles, his impact on the game remains undeniable. Benny Friedman's legacy extends beyond his statistics and accolades. And through his record-breaking achievements are worth noting, the stalwart was part of the inaugural 1953 College Football Hall of Fame class. But he was overlooked for some reason for enshrinement into the Pro Football Hall of Fame until 2005. Quite a travesty. Sadly, some 23 years after he had passed away. In conclusion, Benny Friedman was a trailblazer in professional football. His vision combined with his exceptional talent helped usher in a new era of offensive football, one that we appreciate today. And more importantly, he revolutionized the quarterback position, demonstrating the power of the forward pass. He paved the way for future generations of quarterbacks who could dominate the game with their aerial attacks. His legacy lives on in the thrilling passing games we witness today, a testament to the impact of the Jewish kid from Cleveland who dared to be different. And that is your football history for today and your New York Giants history celebrating those 100 years. We hope you tune in to us next time for some more great football history. Until then, have a great gridiron day. That's all the football history we have today, folks. Join us back tomorrow for more of your football history. We invite you to check out our website, pigskindispatch.com, not only to see the daily football history, but to experience positive football with our many articles on the good people of the game, as well as our own football comic strip, Cleat Marks Comics. Pigskindispatch.com is also on social media outlets, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and don't forget the Pigskin Dispatch YouTube channel to get all of your positive football news and history. Special thanks to the talents of Mike and Gene Monroe, as well as Jason Neff for letting us use their music during our podcast. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com.